Hi everyone, this week's ride is on Dartmoor in Devon, not on the edge of the Devon Cornwall border. And this loop is from Princetown to Burrita and back 12 and a half miles or thereabouts, depending exactly how you do it. And is quite a nice ride, particularly in the sunshine as I was. I have to say the reason I picked this 12 and a half mile loop because there are many options uh, over here. As you can see there, there's some great descents as well. Uh, I'd already been out for a ride earlier in the day with uh, Tina on her bike, so I thought I'd uh, get another ride in in the afternoon. So already after lunch here, and I'd headed southeast out of Princetown on this bridleway, which is a nice, easy start to your ride. Get sort of uh, some cracking views over the tops of the moors here, and uh, it heads you off. You can just see that little blip in the distance there, which you'll get bigger as we get to it is quite literally the first high point of the uh, the ride and that is South Hessery Tor. Um, yep got a little bit of air on one of them jumps all of about two inches well, there you go links to the, to the uh, Strava and Kamut routes are in the description by the way if you want to download this if you fancy having a go although to be honest there's nothing particularly challenging on the navigation on these uh, if you're any good with uh, a map and uh, using an ordnance survey on your phone you'll have no issues but i always recommend carrying a paper map just in case you back paper map just in case your battery dies because uh, we don't want to get stuck on the moors with no navigation do we folks so after we already passed south essery tour it's a lovely downhill and you can get a cracking turn of speed up down here and this heads us down to a place called nuns cross and about 500 meters short of nuns cross we're going to turn off and head down the descent towards Burrita. I'm reliably informed by the locals that actually this isn't the best route to go. Carrying straight on through Nuns Cross and then going across to Burrita as another good descent past the Scout Hut and I actually recommend riding up this which I wouldn't fancy and you'll see why in a minute. So I enjoyed the view, had a quick drink and then set off down this descent which I'd seen a few videos of and thought Ooh, that looks like fun and uh, this descent runs for about two, two and a half miles um, and it's a gentle descent rather than a steep one um, and it's rather rugged in places um, and once you get the feel of it you can get a fair turn of speed up so I was really a bit careful because I hadn't got my knee pads on, or any, apart from the helmet, I've got no real uh, protection on here, so I didn't fancy going over the top. But it was an absolutely beautiful ride. If you enjoy this content by the way folks, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel, it all helps. And uh, gives me an idea what you like watching, apart from anything else I suppose, so I can go and record more of this stuff. Yes, this, as I was saying, this route sort of gently goes up and down. It's more of a cross country than a downhill, but um, the whole the general thing trends uh, downhill. The total route in total only has 288 metres of ascent in the entire loop, and I think we lose most of it on this uh, this uh, descent from Nuns Cross down to Burrito. Um Certainly, I knew by the time I got to the end of it. My arms and legs were absolutely dropping off. Um, I certainly needed a, uh, a, a rest at the end for five minutes. It certainly took, took a fair bit of uh, concentration on some of this and every time you tend to sort of look, look up and admire the views and you can just see in the distance there on the top left is Burrito Reservoir which is where we're heading to. So it gives you an idea of the distance of this uh, this track. But uh, yeah, you, so you need to stay switched on on this because there's some pretty big rocks come out of nowhere and uh, you just got to watch your line. But that said, it was great fun, really enjoyed this.
I'd say the 29 inch wheels on the uh, Stereo 140 really iron some of these bumps out. Uh, not that you'd notice that from the video. So it's very easy to let your speed run away with you on that. It's, say, perhaps if you've run this, done this route a few times and you know what it's like, you, you could go a lot faster. Uh, but I wasn't prepared to go that much faster down here when I was riding blind. It does eat up a little bit, as you can see here, it's a bit uh, smoother and you can take a, a bit of a breather. Um, but it very soon gets back to the, uh, the rocky stuff again. So I wouldn't fancy riding up this, although I, I was told there was a that was the preferred route, but not for me, thanks. At this point, the uh, track bends around to the right. There is a track to the left, but that's on a bridle way, so we don't ride on those, do we, folks? And then uh, we carry on down, still going down this. At this stage, I was beginning to wonder if this downhill was ever going to end. And we came round the corner here and drop onto the tarmac uh, on the uh, banks of the Burrito Reservoir. And I've got to say I've never been quite so pleased for a bit of nice smooth tarmac because by that stage my arms and legs were about shot. So I had a nice rest uh, doing a couple of miles of tarmac which in fairness is the only tarmac uh, bit on the route. So uh, it was quite quiet as well so it's nice having an easy ride around the reservoir. And then we cut off back onto the track here to go across one of the dams on the reservoir. This is all relatively flat so there was no real issues here. But, uh, I did take the opportunity when I got out onto the dam here to uh, have a breather and a drink and soak in the views which were rather pleasant up over the uh, over the reservoir. Yeah, so after that uh, there, it's back onto the road for a short section across the other dam. Try not to run over the pedestrians who are on the wrong side of the road, so they don't know I'm behind them. Good job I've got a bell. Not that they were very interested. And I uh, avoided the urge to stop for an ice cream there, although I probably should have done. And carried on up here and bear off to the left and back onto the old dismantled railway and this dismantled railway then pretty much leads you all the way back to Prince Town and it, it varies to a degree on the quality of it it's quite good when you first get on there it's uh, it's a bit gaty this first bit is you never as soon as you seem to start to get going you uh, have to stop for gates and it's a bit overgrown here um, but that was quite short-lived and uh, once you get out of these uh, the brambles and that it opens up again it's a lovely blossom there on the uh, 
the trees. And I say it opens up, and you have cracking views over the over Dartmoor here, as you follow the uh, the route round. And this pretty much um, takes you up towards King's Tor on the left there. And you can either follow this used railway around King's Tor, or if you're running a bit, little bit short on time, or you want to get back a bit quicker, which I did, there's quite a nice techie climb, which I'm uh, going to bear off right to in a minute. Here we go. As per usual, the, uh, the camera doesn't do it justice, but it was uh, quite a hard climb this was, even on the e-bike. But uh, it did well, and I got up there without, uh, without having to get off, so I was quite pleased with myself with that. And this was really the uh, last proper challenge of the, uh, the route. And once, once I'd got to the top of that, it was back onto the smoother surface and a quick blast round to uh, Princetown and apart from uh, a minor uh, meeting with one of the locals just coming up now uh, the rest of the ride was pretty much in event uneventful go on girl mind your bus I have to say I think that was probably not a good move with the benefit of hindsight but thanks very much for watching folks hope you've enjoyed that I'll see you on the next one.